Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 7 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we are finally going to be converting our unformatted list over into a slideshow. Now, in order to do that, we need to download two modules, the first of which is the View Slideshow module, and the second is the Libraries API module. I will include links to both of these pages in the description below. Go ahead and download both of them extract them into sites all in modules. Now there's one other thing that we're going to need in order to get View Slideshow working, and that is a third-party jQuery plugin called the jQuery Cycle plugin. I will include a link in the description to this page as well. Once you get here, click download the Cycle plugin and click Cycle plugin. Now in here we need to copy all of this jQuery plugin into a text file and we need to save that text file with the same name that's in the URL. So we need to call this jQuery.cycle.all.js. All right, now once we have that downloaded, we need to head back over to our web server. Now we need to do something that we've never done before when installing a new module. So go into Sites, All, and this is normally where you install your modules, but we need to create a new folder in here. And that new folder needs to be called Libraries. Now, any third-party jQuery plugin that a module might use will be found within this Libraries folder. And there's a bridge connection that happens between the Libraries API module and this Libraries folder. So all of Drupal's modules that require a third-party jQuery plugin will find that plugin located inside of this folder. So we need to open that up and View Slideshow takes it one step farther by adding another folder that it's going to look for its plugin in, and that's a folder called jQuery.cycle. So once you have that created, open that up, navigate over to where you downloaded your jQuery plugin, and just drag it and drop it right over into that folder. Once you have that done, we're ready to head back over to our site and turn on our modules. So click the Modules tab at the top, scroll down until you see the Libraries module, turn that on, and also View Slideshow and View Slideshow Cycle, and click Save Configuration. Now what this is going to do is add kind of a new functionality to Drupal's Views module, which will allow us to create a slideshow. So if we head back over into our view once Drupal refreshes here and click Edit View, you'll see that in the preview below, we're only outputting an unformatted list. And the reason that it's doing that is because we told it to use the format of an unformatted list. So let's click this and see what other formats we have available. You can see that we have a grid which will allow us to specify how many columns across we want to display our content. There's also things like HTML lists and jump menus, and some of these we will be diving into later on in order to create different types of views on our site. But now you can see that the slideshow option has been offered to us that wasn't there before. And if we click on that and click apply, and for right now just click apply on this screen as well, you'll see that when our preview updates, we are actually now paging through the different pieces of content and the fields that we've specified to show for each one of those pieces of content. So now we actually have a slideshow that we can use for our homepage slider. Now the cool thing about Drupal's uh, View Slideshow module is that it doesn't just slide images. It will slide any field from any content that you choose. So you don't even need an image to do a slideshow. You might have a slideshow that does slides of different phone numbers or different addresses or, you know, different just different anything, to be honest with you, because View Slideshow is so powerful that we can actually page any field from any content type. So now we do want to investigate some of the settings that we have up here at the top.
So if we click on that settings, you'll see that the very top here is pretty much a lot of the same standard stuff for the different views layouts. We can add views as default row classes. Um, we can strip the odds and evens off of each of those row classes. Um, and this is pretty much the same thing that's found on each one of Drupal's different layouts. However, right below that, we'll start seeing some of the slideshow specific options that we have available to us. The first thing we'll see is this transitions here. And this will allow us to choose different transitions that happen between each slide. Now, there's a couple of ways of figuring out which one of these transitions you want to use. You could either click on one and click apply and see what it does, or you can head back over to the jQuery cycle page. And right here on their homepage, they have a lot of the different cycle effects that we have to choose from. And if you do some hunting around on this site, you'll find more of them. And, and here you can actually just see a demo of what that transition is going to look like without having to click and guess. So that's a nice helpful resource there. For us, we're going to leave it as fade right now. You'll see that there is a View Transition Advanced Options button, and within here, we can set the different amounts of time between the slides. So if you want it to be longer than five seconds, if you want it to be shorter than five seconds, um, you can change the speed of the transition, um, which slide you want to actually start on, and just different things like that uh, can be found within the Advanced Options. Below that is the Actions. And the actions allow us to specify things like, do we want to pause the slideshow when the user hovers over top of it? Um, do we want to pause it when they click on it? And, you know, for us, we actually do want this slideshow to pause when a user hovers because we have a link field. And we don't want our users to go to click the link field and just as they're about to click it, the slide transitions and they click the wrong link. So we do want some of these options to be on and available to us. Now below that you'll see view advanced actions. And in here you'll see just more options to customize your slideshow. You can start the slideshow paused, you can start on the last slide viewed, um, and just a bunch of different options that if you just investigate within here, they have some pretty good descriptions as to what they do, and you can just play around with them and see what happens. Um, below all of that, you'll see this jQuery cycle custom options. Now this is not something that we're probably going to be covering in this series because this series is designed more for beginners getting started with Drupal in general. So we're going to leave this out, but there are some really cool custom options that you can use to customize the slideshow even farther, and it just requires the installation of another jQuery plugin. Um, right below that, though, is something that we do want to take a look at, and you'll see this widgets option. Now, we have options for top widgets and bottom widgets, and the options are exactly the same. For example, if we add controls to the top of our slideshow and we use the text type of controls and click apply, you'll see that what happens is we get a next and a previous button as well as a pause button for our slideshow. Now this can be really helpful when you have multiple slides within your slideshow people can kind of page around and find slides that they're looking for, and it just really makes it easier for the user to navigate this particular section of your site. Um, if you do not have the pause on hover option uh, available to your users, there is a pause button that will allow them to click it, pause the slideshow, and then investigate that slide in whatever way you have available to them. So the controls are a really, really nice feature to be able to just add without having to do anything more complicated than click a button. Now, there's also an option within the widgets for pagers. And what pagers do is they allow you to have a pointer to each individual slide within the slideshow. Upon clicking on one of those pa uh, pager items, it will take you directly to the slide that you clicked on. 
Now, we're going to do something really neat with our pagers, and it's not going to look really all that great right off the get-go because we are going to modify it pretty heavily in the CSS portion of this tutorial series. So what we need to do in order to add the pagers that we're looking for is under Fields, click Add. And under this filter here, we are going to select Global, and then we want this Global View Results Counter. And what this is going to do is this is going to associate a single number with a single slide. And as you can see here in the bottom, we have slide 1, and when it pages, it goes to slide 2. Um, we do want to get rid of the label, and then we don't actually want to show this in our slideshow, we, so we want to select Exclude from Display and click OK. Now what you'll see is that absolutely nothing has changed about our slideshow because we added a field to it, but we told it not to display that field. And the reason being is because we are going to use that field as our pager field. It's another one of the really nice advanced options that View Slideshow gives to you in that it lets you use whatever fields you want to use from your slideshow to be the pager. So if we click on pager for the bottom, you'll see that here under pager fields, it gives us all of the fields that we currently have selected within our slideshow. So we could actually use the image as our pager. We could add the image field again and maybe change its size and use that as a pager field so that when people are looking through the different pagers, they actually get a small preview of what the slide is going to look like. And then when they click on it, it makes the slide bigger. It also offers to them all of the other fields that you may have included within your slideshow. And that can be a really cool way to do uh, a slideshow pager. And we probably will do that somewhere on the inside of our website. But for right now, we are going to click the global results counter and click apply. And what you'll see happen is that View Slideshow adds these numbers to the very bottom. And when you click on each of these numbers, it will take you directly to the slide that you clicked on. Now, what we're going to do with these numbers in the CSS portion is theme them up to be small squares that will just kind of appear over top of the image in our slideshow, and they'll just look more like buttons than they will anything, and we'll be getting rid of the number entirely, and it'll just be a really nice aesthetical way to page between different slides. And the reason we're doing this and not just using the image everywhere is because I want to show you some of the different options that we have to page between different slides. So now once that is set up, we can click Save, And once our Drupal site refreshes here, you'll see that we now have our slideshow. And if we just let it run, it'll start sliding through each of the different slides. We have our next and previous buttons that give us a little bit of control over our, our slideshow. We also have a pause button that will pause the slideshow entirely. We have the ability to hover over our slideshow, and if you notice, the pause button does the same thing as if I had clicked on it, and it just pauses the slideshow. We have our results counter here at the bottom that we are currently using as pagers, which will allow us to page back and forth. Now, one other option you have with pagers is when you select them, at the very bottom, you'll see a checkbox that says activate on hover. So instead of having to click on these, you can set them up so that when you hover them, they'll also change the slideshow. And that's just not something that we're going to do right now. We'll probably do that inside. But for us right now, we just want them to be able to be clicked on. Now, there's one other portion about this slideshow that just really feels like it's missing, and that's the image width. So in the next video, what we're going to do is take this slideshow image and expand it all the way across this content region, give it a little more width, give it a little more height, and make it really look like a big in-your-face slideshow that when you first land on our Drupal site, you're going to see this awesome slideshow with these really great call to actions that will take us to other pages within our site. So we're going to take care of that in the next video 
episode using the image styles module. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next episode of One Stop How To Guys Practical Drupal Development.